Saturday, there were actually two massive blows against these race policies that have been tearing the West apart for years now. We had the voice here, of course. New Zealand had an election where the Labor Party, that under Jacinda Ardern had a landslide win last time, this time had a landslide loss, losing half their seats to the Nationals under Christopher Luxon with his more libertarian partners, the ACT Party. Plus, if they still need numbers to make up government, there's Winston Peters back as well. Peters has been attacking one of Labor's biggest weaknesses, a new racist policy to give Maori New Zealanders, who are just 17% of the population, equal say with the other 83%, everyone else, over water and health bodies. Joining me is Australia's top foreign affairs writer, Greg Sheridan, the Australian newspaper. Greg, it's this... I won't go too far in saying that what's happened here and in New Zealand is a huge defeat for race politics. Yeah, absolutely right, Andrew. And um, uh, the Australian people are, um, are allergic to uh, identity politics. Most democratic electorates are. You know, in, in America, the sort of uh, defund the police, the folks who hated that were poor black folks in crime-ridden neighbourhoods. You know, the, the people who love this stuff, the limousine liberals. So Canberra voted exactly opposite to the way the rest of Australia voted. So they're a nice little city, Canberra, quite near an interesting country called Australia, you know, about which they know nothing and which they misrule and which they never understand. But I think it was a magnificent exercise in democracy. Australian voters should be applauded. You've, I've never seen so much institutional power ranged on one side of an argument. I know. Australians deliberated. They took it seriously. I don't believe for a minute... There's hostility towards Indigenous Australians in any of this. The heroes of the no case were Jacinda Price, Warren Mundine. The, um, I think Noel Pearson is quite wrong to say the Aboriginals are the group for whom Australians have the least affection. I think that's rubbish. That's I think nice. people... This was an assertion. Aboriginals are part of the Australian nation and will never be imprisoned in a category. And as usual, the Australian people were wiser then they're betters. And the final point I'd make is, I'm a big immigration man, not everyone is. I was curious, I thought, I wonder, so many, it's 25 years since we've had a referendum, so millions of our people, you know, are new. Have they got the tradition of That's what I was wondering. and Celtic scepticism and all myself. the rest? And they've got it in droves. I mean, all the ethnic spokesmen said, yes, yes, we support the yes case. And all the ethnic voters said, no, no, not apart, us. Apart from the Chinese I, I read somewhere, I don't know how true that is, Chinese Australians tended to vote yes. I don't know how true that is. But it's, I wonder whether it's because when you start playing this race politics, a lot of these people are refugees from race politics in their own country, right? Malaysia's race politics, for instance, uh, wherever you go, really. And... When you're saying this race comes first, that begs the question, or that suggests the question, who comes second, who comes third, who comes fourth? Do immigrants come last, being the last here? The whole thing is so stupid. Absolutely right. Malaysia is a classic example. They have policies which favour Bumiputra, sons of the soil, uh, ethnic Malays. As a result, most of our immigrants from Malaysia are ethnic Chinese and ethnic Indians. They left Malaysia because they hate that stuff. They came here because they believe in the creed of democracy and civic equality. They want for themselves and their kids universal, equal citizenship. I mean, the West is going insane with this identity politics and it's repudiating the very thing which made it distinctive and loved of the world. It's universal citizenship. It made it a refuge to the world. Um, New Zealand, uh, how does that play into this? So New Zealand uh, is also a striking result. I thought Jacinda Ardern was a terrible Prime Minister. When she resigned, I said, you know, she's one of the worst Prime Ministers New Zealand has had and she delivered nothing of substance. And the ABC breakfast program said, oh, Sheridan's <laughs> over the top, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? At the next election, Labor's vote was cut in half and she resigned because she could see she what was it. coming. Mm. She never delivered anything of substance. She promised 100,000 houses. She delivered about three, you know, the economy went off the road. And it was only in her second term that she went down the road of this really excess identity politics, you know, the joint co-sovereignty co with the Maoris, co-governance with the Maoris. And this is 
tremendously divisive. A good friend of mine who lived for a long time in New Zealand said it went from being a successful multiracial society to being an unsuccessful bicultural society. And uh, crime went up uh, because, you know, the centre-left governments are very soft on crime. And But, of course, if you're soft on the criminal, you're very hard on the victim of the crime. The person who suffers is not the limousine liberal living in their mansion in their wealthy suburb. The person who suffers is the is the person in an impoverished neighbourhood. Yeah, I know the Nationals uh, didn't uh, campaign hard against the race politics, but the ACT Party did campaign. Winston Peters, who's back in Parliament, the former Deputy Prime Minister, former Foreign Minister, campaigned very hard against race politics. That is on the agenda. Now, whether the new Prime Minister will have the guts to do much about it, I don't know. Uh, quickly, Greg, we were warned by Labor... Oh, look... You know, uh, you've got to vote for the voice because look how we will seem to the rest of the world. Uh, well, what has the rest of the world said? That was always the most ridiculous argument. And the government was too embarrassed to make it very much, you know. I mean, Julie Bishop made it more than Penny Wong. It is the stupidest argument in the world. Southeast Asia couldn't care less about our identity politics. Most of the world is not aware of it, uh, of it at all. If we go out and tell the world we're racist... So they'll at least, believe it. They'll believe it. But at least Albanese and Wong today had the sense... Last week they were saying, if you vote no, it'll show we're racist. Today they were saying... No, nobody yeah. voted because... Which is good, that's good. I mean, No, I'm that is that good, they but they should change. never have been doing it, particularly not. when this was headed for near defeat. They kept doing it right up to Election Day. Yeah. I think that was so recklessly irresponsible. I can't begin to say. Greg Sheridan, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Andrew.